Great to have you back here on The Breakfast on PLOS TV Africa. Our next conversation this morning is on the well, latest revelations uh, on the Minister of Communications and Digital uh, Economy, Esa Pantami. Uh, new release documents uh, have it, well, implicated and uh, spread some light on the ideologies of the Communications and Digital Economy Minister. The document, which has been widely shared, contains the minutes of a supposed meeting of a religious organization, JNI. In it, are alleged plans to wage a war on persons of another religious or leaning. Communications Minister allegedly chaired the meeting in 2010, and there has uh, currently been no reaction from the minister or the federal government, but a number of people have increased their call on Pantami to resign. Joining us to look at this is a uh, freelance journalist, David Hundane, who has been investigating and, of course, uh, putting this uh, a lot of uh, information concerning this uh, story out there. Good morning to you, David. Good morning. Good morning. Thanks for having me. We're also speaking this morning uh, from Abuja with the spokesman of the Arawa Youths for Peace and Security, Salihu Dantata. Good morning, um, Mr. Dantata. Uh, very good morning, my brother. Yes. Thanks good for morning. joining us. All right, I'm going to start with uh, Mr. Dantata this morning. Uh, it, it's been a very, very interesting week uh, for uh, Issa Pantami and, of course, for Nigerians who have been following up on these conversations. But I want your quick thoughts on the latest uh, revelations. The meeting in 2010, the conclusions that you know were uh, met at that meeting. Um, what do all these things mean to you, and how damaging you know, might this be? Well, uh, as a professional, as well as a seasoned uh, public affairs analyst, I don't see it as a big deal, because the issues are issues that happen before his appointment as a minister of Federal Republic of Nigeria. And you know, in Nigeria, for example, we have two... Uh, Secular, we are a secular state with two leading religions, Christianity and Islam. As at the time, the Honorable Minister of Communication made the statement, he, was, he wasn't appointed minister, he was just a cleric of the Islamic faith. And uh, even in Bible and Quran, when somebody makes mistakes and admits and asks for forgiveness, the two holy books, Quran and the Bible respectively, uh, gives that opportunity in some chapters and verses where such persons are uh, forgiven for some of their utterances or misdeeds. And the Minister of Communication did come out to say, yes, I did, I made, I, I made such utterances in the past, but I am very sorry. At no. the time, the former U.S. Uh, Democrat President Bill Clinton had uh, an affection in the White House with uh, White House uh, intern Monica Lewinsky against opposition backdrop and call for his resignation, the moment he apologized, American as civilized as their democracy was, uh, forgave him and allowed Mr. him Dante, to continue I, I, his tenure. Um, apologize. Uh, I just want to quickly step in here and uh, be sure that we're on the same page. Uh, the conversation we're having this morning is not on the videos and uh, the audio clips that were released uh, a couple of days ago. We're talking of a, a new release document of a meeting that was held in 2010 by the GNI. It was chaired by uh, Isa Pantami. And it speaks of a jihad, it speaks of chasing away and, of course, uh, violence against uh, people of a different faith. It speaks also on the Kaduna state governor back then, uh, Yakowa. It speaks on so much. Um, are you saying that these things also should be seen as, you know, Pantami's past and should be ignored and forgiven? Uh, uh, abs absolutely, absolutely. You see, there is no difference uh, between the statement he made as a member of uh, JNI and other groups and uh, the uh, other accusation. All I'm trying to say is, now he's a minister. These statements were made before he was appointed a minister. And why did it take so long for these statements to be brought to public uh, domain? Because during the time he was to be appointed a minister, they went through a thorough Senate ministerial screening. This were the time that these... Uh, Critics and uh, people that are bringing these petitions to the forefront ought to have taken such petitions before the Senate leadership not to allow the screening of pandemic to go on then as a ministerial nominee, not now. So no matter what water and how tangible these uh, petitions they are bringing now, 
no reasonable and sensible person is going to take them serious because we are attaching it to uh, fanatism, we are attaching it to politics of uh, this, uh, the, the, uh, the, the, the denting of his image, especially as he has taken certain steps to ensure that everybody enrolled for the national identification number, which is trying to expose certain people that have been supportive of uh, terrorism, supportive of armed banditry and also others. So I feel certain people are not comfortable with the initiative of the Honorable Minister to say that this NIN registration must be complied with All and right. certain criteria must be met except uh, all that are made, nobody is going to be able no, to I continue miss, to make calls to any of the provider. Mr. Danta, I think we get your point there. Okay. So, just to make sure we're all on the same page, I am going to be reading out a few statements, you know, from these documents that we're, that we're talking about. So, on the, you know, 13th of July 2010, on the 10th, 13th of July 2010, there was a meeting by the GNI, the Janatu uh, Islam you know, group based in Kaduna, you know, with four states consisting of Plateau, Bauchi, Kaduna, and Niger State. This held in Bauchi State, and this meeting was chaired by Malam Ali Ibrahim Pantemi. You know, then he was a cleric. Now, in this meeting, they talked about the liberation of Kaduna State. They said they were going to re-strategize towards the full implementation of jihad in Joss and Plateau State and Kaduna. And that, you know, they were going to receive or treat reports that, that Christians were persecuting Muslims in northern Nigeria. At the end of the day, they reached the following conclusion. They said, one, 90 days from now, Muslims must ensure that peace has escaped Kaduna State. They say Muslims must hunt all Christians especially those in the cities. Number three, they say, we must either use the security or other means to eliminate the governor, and we're talking about the then governor, Patrick Yakoa. We must use all security means to eliminate governor Yakoa, his family, and all those that they perceive are supporting him. Number four, they say, we must face and frustrate all Christians in Kaduna who are civil servants and traders. Number five, they say attacks must continue to be launched against Christians' predominated areas as signals before jihad. They say they shall use their men who are in the military and help bring arms and ammunition into Kaduna. Number seven, use all resources possible to control the security before and after jihad. And that this is highly confidential and must be related to all Muslims who wish to support this movement. David Duday, do you see these points as not a big deal? and to be only taken serious by unreasonable people, like Mr. Dantata has said? Um, I'm going to try to um, moderate my answer as best as I can, because um, I don't want to get you guys taken off the air. So um, bear with me here. But I have absolutely, I couldn't believe what I was hearing just now. Um, I'm not sure Mr. Dantata actually knows what job he's doing, if he thinks that was a defense of Isa Pantami, I couldn't quite believe what I was hearing. He said those things that were, that were written down in the communique were not a big deal. I don't think he understands the gravity of what he just said. He essentially just admitted to a serving minister of the Federal Republic of Nigeria plotting murder, plotting a genocide in 2010. And he has come here to say it was not a big deal because it happened before he was a minister. What? Are you, are you serious right now? I, how does that make... Listen, I, I currently am in, in possession of the 1,000-page report uh, about violence in the middle belt of Nigeria. This report was presented to the United States government, the United States government in, in 2020. It was uh, cited by Mike Pence, the former vice president of the U.S. And I'm just going to show you a few brief excerpts from that report I'm holding. It's a really lengthy report, 1,000 pages, but I'm just going to turn a few pages okay. and show you something, right? Now, right. look at these pages, right? Can you see these names? Yes. These names. Every single name here is a dead person. Every single name here is a Christian who was killed in the Middle Belt since 2010. I'm going to keep turning and turning. Every single name you see here is a dead person. 
I can keep turning for another 50 pages. It goes on and on and on and on and on and on and on like this. Every single name you see here is a dead person. So, David, can you tell us how, how they died? Do you, do you have that information? What was Mr. Dantata on about when he says it was not a big deal? Does he understand that that meeting essentially condemned all those people I just showed you to death? Does he understand that there were real-world consequences of that meeting? Does he understand that he just admitted to a serving federal government minister plotting a religious genocide? Does he, admit, does he understand the gravity of what he just admitted on national television? Is, is, is he sure he knows what he's saying? Or does he want to recant everything he just said? Okay, so, Over well, well, David, um, let's bring uh, back uh, Danta, uh, Mr. Dantata. David, can you just hold on? We'll get back to you. Mr. Dantata, um, I'm sure you've been following. I want you, you know, your response to that. Um, well, you see, you, yeah, you see what my friend is saying over there is just like trying to incite the Nigerian society. Because even him as a journalist, his role is to serve as watchdog and mouthpiece of the society to know what to say, when and how. At this time, that the nation is facing problem of terrorism, armed banditry, kidnap-related crisis, and other threats to our uh, yep. security. Mr. Danta, this is what I, wanna, be, I yes. want us to, um, I want you to address. Do you agree that your statements earlier um, have basically meant that you agree that that meeting held, um, those um, agreements were, were had in that meeting, and uh, the uh, minister chaired that meeting, and of course it was a part of that meeting, and those agreements were had. Are you agreeing I, that all of those things happened, I, I, but you're simply I saying, kindly hold on, my, my, kindly hold on, sir. Uh, are you agreeing that those things happened and those, um, you know, the uh, conclusions were reached at that meeting, but the challenge here is that it was all done before he became minister? Let me ask my, uh, my, my co-guest certain questions. He said it held. Can he produce audio evidence or television evidence? He affirmed that it was said to be kept confidential by who you should know that the nigerian state has security apparatus running from department of state services that have the highest intelligence gathering mechanism also have the police first criminal intelligence department as well as in every state command you have what you call criminal investigation department in a country like nigeria where all the intelligence apparatus of the security is working i don't think if that kind of meeting held that is genocidal by Jamaatu Nasri Islam at, in Kaduna at that time, I don't think somebody like Pantami, even though he was not minister, then would have been left without not being arrested. So I think it is the antics of detractors. They are being economical with the truth. And if they have any proof, like I challenge them, audio or television, let them bring it to the forefront. And again, I want to re-emphasize that that is what you call Department of State Services screening of any Nigerian citizen that is designated for either ambassadoria, ministeria, or uh, airship of any of the sensitive uh, federal agencies in Nigeria. What happens to the security checking, background checking, and other reports? As well, again, what stopped these same opponents? that are bringing this issue to the forefront now to have taken it to the Senate Screening Committee. No matter how beautiful these uh, criticisms they are raising are, they are no longer holding water. That is even to tell you that there is no audio or television evidence any of these people raising these issues now can bring. And for my friend to tell me but, but, that but I am Dantata, trying there to was, there was agree audio. is not true. Because even if you take issues related to this, to the International Criminal Court at the Hague, they will first of all ask you of the audio or oh, television evidences. Most of the high-profile wow. wow. uh, personalities from Charles Taylor to Bagbo and other international uh, uh, suspects that have been taken to International Criminal Court, there were audio and television evidences that they committed against humanity and were involved in certain things that made people to lose wow. their lives. Well, so I feel this go, issue of the Dantata. communication we're, minister we're gonna, we're gonna go is being politicized. Kindly hold on, and Mr. Nigerians are now sensible to reason from fiction 
to reality. Absolutely. Um, we're going to go back to David. I think Aneta wants to uh, bring him in here. Okay. Uh, but just quickly note that there was audio, you know, in the past, and that audio clip, you know, that you know, it, it, um, you know, was released, mm -hmm. you know, of uh, the minister speaking, is the same audio clip that there's, you know, that people are saying that should be forgiven. You know, so I don't think it's a lack of audio or video that we, we, you know should be our challenge here. But um, okay, David. It's great yes. that when you talk about journalism, we're dealing with hard facts and evidence. So far, we've heard an audio clip, right? I wonder if Mr. Dantata has seen that or heard that because we all heard that clip and uh, in it, we heard how, you know, Pantami basically was, you know, advocating for the defense of the lives of terrorists, saying they shouldn't be killed. Even though he did raise some points that, you know, lots of people agree with, saying they should have been tried rather than just being shot, shot dead just like that. You know, that's a valid point, protection of human rights, right? But also, we, t we heard him talk about, you know, how, you know, Osama bin Laden was a better Muslim than he was, than he is, and how he professed support for groups like the Taliban and other, you know, terrorist groups. So bringing in your investigation, because I'm aware that you've dug into this, dug into Pantami and all the allegations about him. What did your investigations reveal when you looked into Pantami's past? And really, for people who have been saying his past has no bearing on his present and future, what do you say to that? I just want to quickly respond to uh, what Sally who said, because again, it strikes me that this person you brought on the show doesn't really have a solid grasp of the facts at all. The meeting in question isn't some conspiracy theory somewhere. It was actually in the news. It was recorded. You can Google it. It was on Vanguard News. It was on PM News. It was on Daily Sun. It was all over the media. It actually happened. What has changed now is that the communique that came out of that meeting has become public knowledge now. But that meeting actually happened. It was actually in the news. So I don't know what he's talking about when he says, oh, where, uh, where is the evidence? It was, it's on the record that that meeting happened. And then when he says, oh, uh, that the DSS and, and the Senate screen ministerial candidates. Well, again, obviously he has not been following the news because if he had been following the news, as I yesterday, if the immediate past uh, director of DSS uh, 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 Dennis Amakri uh, spoke to Punch newspaper and he said that the DSS wrote a dossier on Issa Pantami recommending that the, the president should not hire him because of his past. And the president ignored the DSS and chose to hire him anyway. Right? And it also emerged yesterday that at the Senate hearing where Pantami was confirmed, the hearing lasted for only 11 minutes and there was no question that was entertained about his past. So again, he's being very, either he has no idea what he's talking about, or he's being very economical with the truth. And he says that Pantami was cleared by the DSS. That is absolutely false. He was not cleared by the DSS. DSS recommended that he should not be hired. And President Buhari, for reasons best known to him, chose to hire him anyway. And then the Senate hearing was a mockery. It lasted for just 11 minutes. Now, um, it, it, it's important to separate issues here when you're talking, of, uh, going back to your question. The audio clips in question are separate. Are a separate issue to the JNI statement, which which was released yesterday. Those audio clips dating back to the uh, early to mid uh, '90s, the big Pantami at his peak as a cleric in Bauchi State, where he had a reign of terror at ATBU, uh, basically advocating for Al Qaeda and the Taliban. Right now, uh, this that. The details of that speech have actually been in the public domain since 2019, when a, a professor of contemporary Islamic studies, uh, Dr. Andrea Brigaglia, who used to be at the University of Cape Town Center for Contemporary Islam and is now at the University of Naples in Italy, published a research paper called Debating Boko Haram. And in that paper, he repeatedly mentioned, he repeatedly made reference to Imam Isa Ali uh, Ibrahim Pantami and his ideological dispute with Mohammed Yusuf. In that paper, he did a translation of the speech in question, which was called Suwai Yan Taliban, which means who is the Taliban. Now, uh, it has been in the public domain, but it, perhaps it didn't make the news because there wasn't an audio file to support this thing yet. A few weeks ago, the audio files showed up on the internet. I'm not quite sure how it showed up on a, on a Nigerian Muslim community website, but it showed up and a, 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 an anonymous source hinted me as to its existence. And that was where my curiosity was peaked because then I was able to actually confirm that this speech actually happened. This is the audio. This is Pantami's voice. I actually used voice analysis software and eventually Pantami himself confirmed that he did say those things.
This is Pantami's voice. This is him saying these things. So after I did the first article, and then Pantami tried very disingenuously to infer that perhaps Dr. Brigaglia's translation was wrong, perhaps he doesn't understand Hausa properly, perhaps he has something against him. Then I had a native Hausa speaker born and raised in Kaduna to actually translate the video. And then I did the second article, and if you go, it's on Newswire NGR, it's right there, where I extracted the audio from, from that video clip, and I very carefully used the translations to subtitle the videos. All these things are in the public domain. So if it's not, this is not a conversation about, oh, uh, there's lack of evidence or, or a supposition. There's no supposition here. Right? I have done my job, and I am very good at my job. Right? So we're, we're no longer having a conversation about whether this happened or whether Isa Pantami is an extremist. It's happened, and he is an extremist. So the conversation we should be, happening, we should be having now is, why is he still in office? He shouldn't be in office. The president well, should have fired him last week. David, Why is he still in office? David, uh, well, that, that's, you know, a whole new conversation. And, you know, when we bring in the conversation on the reaction of the Nigerian government, hopefully, you know, we can bring that up before we end the program. Uh, but I want you to, in a minute, uh, possible, uh, please share with us, you know, if it is necessary and if there is any way to link the minutes of that meeting with what has played out security-wise in Nigeria in the last 10 years. Well, absolutely, because as I showed you in, in the and by the way, over the next few hours, I'm going to be tweeting some excerpts from that report because even I've been sitting on it for close to a year now, but I think it's time for these things to get into the public domain. There has been an actual genocide which has been perpetrated in the Middle Belt, especially over the past six years, right? And our challenge has been to prove that this is not just a, some unfortunate confluence of events, that this is actually planned and premeditated, right? Because that's, that's one of the key ways to proving that a genocide has happened. You have to prove that it isn't just a bunch of people who died, unfortunately, that people actually planned and premeditated this. This communique has proven, without a shadow of doubt, that what we have seen, particularly in the Middle Belt, in places like Plateau and Benway, over the past six years, is absolutely premeditated. It was planned. And that the violence, apart from being ethnic and being economic, is also religious. Okay. So, David, today, I, I want you to, to just kind of hold your thoughts there. Let's bring in Mr. Dantata. Mr. Dantata, can you hear me? Yes, I'm with, right with you. Fly on. So, so, with all the controversy we've seen in the past week, especially with this recently released document, uh, what do you say to calls for Pantami to resign? Well, I think that call uh, should be ignored. Uh, is callous and uh, is unpatriotic to nation building. Because so far, among the ministers that the president has, President Mohamed Bahari, Pantami is having the uh, zeal and desire to do certain things that other of his predecessors did not do in the communication industry. Like I said earlier, the reasons for the onslaught against him, for the attack against him, are not far-fetched simply because of this national identification number that he has made a compulsion. Therefore, certain people that are disgruntled, undesirable, and unpatriotic to nation building must do anything to bring them down. Already, the speaker has already done something in the lower chamber by overruling uh, Honorable Elumelu as regarding that, and even, I believe, the upper chamber too will not let it have a light of the All day. Right. Competence exceeds mediocrity. Competence exceeds self-centered interest. It exceeds any other antics of people who do not want this administration to succeed. Okay. And like uh, my co-guest said, that uh, the former DG of the Department of State Services had earlier told the president, what stopped that director general if he was that patriotic at that time to bring it to some media outfits and let it become a public document? Why now? There are certain people that are sponsoring certain people to bring Patami down, and we, as patriotic Nigerians, okay. we uh, never so allow that. Just that. one so, question before you go. Are, are you trying to say that you believe in all honesty that Pantami is a totally different person from who he was many years ago? Absolutely. You see, absolutely. In the, in the two religions we have, uh, oh. Islam and Christianity, tell me the cleric that either in mocks or church that doesn't preach against certain things. You know, well, we have known it, how it, it, some of not, our religious not, leaders have become. So it's, it's, uh, it's extremism we're talking about here. Uh, Salihu Dantata.
But David uh, Hunday, uh, would like that you hold on and join us in our next segment. Salih Udantata, thank you very much for speaking with us and for joining us this morning. Uh, thank, like you. To speak with you again. thank you. I, 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 I. All right, David Uday, we're um, holding on to you if you can. Uh, we'd like to continue this conversation and speak about the National uh, Assembly and, of course, Femi Bajabia Mila. Uh, we want to, you know, speak about the uh, tribal religious leanings that are possible in Nigeria's National Assembly and what happened yesterday with the conversation concerning Issa Pantami. So stay with us. We'll be back after the short break. Thank you.